The following is a presentation of Chandler Christian Church in Chandler, Arizona. For more information, please go to chandlercc.org. All right, we're talking today about uh, Wi-Fi, uh, tuning in to hearing God speak. One of the most important concepts in the entire Bible is the fact that God speaks to us. You know, it says all through scriptures, if you turn the pages, it says, and God said this, and God said that. He speaks to people. And the reason he does that is because he created us in the beginning to have a relationship with him. He didn't just create us and say, hey, good luck, meet you on the other side. He created us and said, I want a relationship with you. I want to interact with you. I want to know you and love you. I want you to know me and to love me back. God created us for relationships. And just like every relationship, I think you guys would agree, just like every relationship, it requires communication, whether uh, that's a relationship with your parents or, or a relationship with your spouse or relationship with friends or whatever. Without communication, there is no relationship, right? Without communication, there's no relationship. How many guys realize that even in the best relationships, uh, communication can be tough? Yeah, communication is a, a, a tough thing. I was talking to uh, some friends of ours uh, about a month ago, and they were uh, six, seven months pregnant, she is, and uh, she's telling us about how she was feeling really bad that week, and she called her doctor, and her doctor said, you know, maybe we shouldn't play around with this, take any chances. I'm going to go ahead and send you to the hospital. And so six, seven months pregnant, she goes to the hospital, where her husband is in a really important meeting at work. So she calls him at work and said, "Hun." I'm going to the hospital, to which he says, I'm really busy right now in this meeting, I've got to go, and he hangs up. Now, how many of you guys have been pregnant before, ladies? <laughs> Would you put up with that? Yeah. And so um, she takes herself to the hospital, okay? So later on in the day, after he's done with his meetings, uh, she calls her, and, and, or he calls, he calls her. By the way, um, she was okay, hospital sent her home, said bed rest, uh, sh- she's good. But he calls her from work after the meetings are over and says, hey, hon, I'm just checking in, see how your day's going. And she's like, are you kidding me? I almost didn't even take this call. I am so mad at you. I just came from the hospital. And he's like, what? You came from the hospital? Yeah, I called you and said, I'm going to the hospital. And he said, I thought you said, I'm going to Costco. And I was thinking, why in the world are you calling me in the middle of this important meeting to say Costco? That's kind of important information, right? And she got over that and let him back in the house about a week and a half later uh, on that. But communication's tough. And the problem is it could be misunderstood. Um, You know, sometimes it's hard. Now, would you guys agree that if communicating with another human being who's right in front of you or communicating with somebody who's on the phone, you can hear their voice, if that's a tough thing and we can mess that up, don't you think it's easy to mess up communication with God? When God's trying to speak to us and we don't necessarily see him right in front of us, he doesn't call us up on the phone, that can be easily messed up too. And so the key is learning how God wants to communicate with us. God wants to communicate with us, but how does he do it? I've heard uh, people ask me, since I'm a pastor, they've, they've asked and said, Matt, does God speak to you in an audible voice? Now, God could do that, but the answer to that for me is no. He doesn't need to. He doesn't need to speak to my ear when he can speak directly into my mind. God can do that. It's just like in this room right now, there are all kinds of TV and radio waves going through here that we just don't see. But just because we don't see them doesn't mean they're not here, Right? But if we get the right tuner, we can see it. We can hear those messages. The key to communicating with God is learning to tune in to how God wants to speak to us. So this weekend, we're gonna talk about how it is that God wants to speak to us. Now, before I get into the how, I wanna first stop and talk about why it's important that God wants to speak to us. Why is this so vital? Why is this so important? I'm gonna give you three quick reasons, okay? Three quick reasons why it's so important that God speaks to us. Number one, why we hear from God. 
Number one, it's important to hear from God because it protects me, or I'm sorry, it proves I'm in God's family. It proves I'm in God's family. It verifies that I'm a believer. It confirms my relationship with God. That's what Jesus was saying to his disciples when he said in John 10, 27 and 28, he said, my sheep listen to my voice. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. What he's saying there is my sheep know my voice. I know them and they're able to follow me because they hear me. Now in that he talks about that he's the gate and the only way to get into a relationship with God is to go through the gate that is Jesus Christ. There's no other way in. And so the first idea of hearing from God is to know him through a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's how we hear from him. And once we do that, it proves that I am a a believer. It proves I'm in his family. Now I could say up here right now that I know Larry Fitzgerald, right? I could say, I know know Larry Fitzgerald. And and I I really don't. But I mean, you, you could say, well, what do you mean? I could say, well, I write him all the time. You might ask, well, does he write you back? Well, no, he didn't write me back, but you know, I write him. Now, I call him all the time too. Does he call you back? Well, no, he hadn't called me back yet, but, but I call him all the time. Like, have you ever had a conversation with Larry Fitzgerald? Well, no, we've never talked. And you might say, Matt, you may be a fan of Larry Fitzgerald, perhaps even a stalker of Larry Fitzgerald, <laughs> but you do not know Larry Fitzgerald. I think there are a lot of people who are fans of God, but they don't know God personally because they don't hear from him. They don't hear his voice. They don't know him through a relationship with Jesus Christ. So first of all, it proves I'm in his family. Second of all, it protects me from mistakes, mistakes that that cost me dearly. I want you to finish this sentence for me, okay? If I knew then what I know what? Now. If I knew then what I know now. How many of you guys have thought that or or some form of that or said that? You know, we wish we could go back and and have the information that we have now so that we could prevent ourselves from making major mistakes. And they say experience is the best teacher, right? Well, I beg to differ. Experience is a great teacher, but the best teacher is God's word and God's wisdom because he says, I want you to listen to me I want you to hear from me because I'm gonna protect you from many of those mistakes. You know, Pastor Roger um, encouraged us all to read through the book of Proverbs, one chapter a week. And the book of Proverbs is chock full of wisdom from God preventing terrible mistakes on our behalf. We don't have to experience all the pain of some of the choices we make to know that they're bad choices. We can learn from God that they're bad choices. He says in Proverbs 2.11, this is from the reading uh, this week, discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. So sometimes, you know, God is trying to prevent me from a mistake. You know, he simply says, don't or stop or apologize. That's usually with my wife. But he says different things to us, right? And that's God's word trying to protect us from mistakes. Third, it leads me to life's true blessings. Hearing God's voice, listening to him, leads me to life's true blessings. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Now the way we do that is by listening to God, by hearing his voice. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Now, That phrase, makes your path straight, that means that God is gonna lead you straight to what's truly blessings in life, what life's true blessings are. And that is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. God leads you to that as we listen to his voice. And so hearing from him is vital. Proves him in his family, it protects him from mistakes, and it leads us to life's true blessing. That's what God wants to do as he speaks to us. So it's, it's important. But how do I hear God speak? How do I learn to hear from God? I wanna talk about four ways, four ways, different ways that God speaks. The first way is foundational. 
and it's foundational to all the rest. It, it's the most important. Number one, God speaks through his word. God speaks through his word, the Bible, scriptures. That's what Paul is talking about to Timothy, who was his protege in the faith, who was this guy he was trying to mentor along. He was a young man. And he said to him in 2 Timothy 3, 15 through 17, and you know how from infancy you have known the Holy Scripture. He, so he's been learning the Bible, learning what God says all along, which are able to make you wise for salvation. Underline that phrase, wise for salvation in your outlines there. Through faith in Christ Jesus. What he's saying here is, Timothy, before you became a Christian, here's how God spoke to you. Before you were a believer, here's what God said to you. His messages were all about how you could get saved, how you could get into God's family, how you could have a relationship with your creator, with God, make you wise for salvation. And that comes through Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying here. And then he goes on to say in verse 16, all scripture is God breathed. So how much scripture? All scripture is God breathed. Go ahead and underline that phrase, God breathed. And then he says, it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So I had you underline that phrase, God breathed. That can also be translated inspired. It might be that in, in your Bibles, if, if you have your Bibles turned there. It could be God breathed inspired. It, it literally means that, that God breathed these words into the minds of these prophets who wrote down, as they were inspired by God's spirit, wrote down the very words of God. So it means the scriptures we have, all of them are the mind of God, the words of God. That's important to understand that. This is God's word. And I already told you in verse 15, he says that the way he speaks to an unbeliever is he says, this is how you get saved. Here's how you can come to a saving knowledge um, through Jesus Christ. But in verses 16 and 17, it tells us about the purpose of God's communication with believers. It tells us about how he, how he speaks to us through his word. And he gives four main purposes of his word and they all kind of go together, okay? But what it's saying here is, here's how God speaks to you through the scriptures, through his word. Number one, it says that it teaches us. It teaches us what is right. It teaches us what is right. The word for teach there that Paul uses, it's the same word for doctrine, or the same word for God's body of truth, God's truths. And so he teaches us about what is right and about what is true in this world. A critical question that all of us have to ask is this. What determines truth for you? What determines truth for you? Is it the leading experts? Is it uh, popular opinion? Is it uh, your feelings? Is it tradition? What is it that determines truth for you? And so for the Christian, what Paul is saying here is what determines truth is God's word. God's word speaks to us by teaching us about what is truth right, first of all. Secondly, it convicts us of what is not right. Convicts us of what is not right. That's what he means when he uses the word rebukes there. That word rebukes means that as we come across scriptures that talk about God's ways and we realize that, that our lives, our actions don't line up with that, that, that we have sinned, that Bible convicts us of the sin in our life. He rebukes us. He says, that's wrong. That's not right. And so we're reading the scriptures and something inside us just kind of blares a light and says, that's not right in you. That's not right in you. Convicts us. And that's kind of a tough thing to understand that that's one way that God speaks to us because, um, you know, if you're like me, you don't like to be told you're wrong, right? That's not like a fun activity um, for me. I, I don't like that. But think about it this way. What if, you know, if you have kids... What if uh, they came home with their math test over and over and they marked every time two plus two is five and the teacher never marked it wrong? You would think, this teacher is not interested in helping my kid learn. This teacher is not interested in helping my kid grow. 
And one of the ways in which God works with us and speaks to us, he wants to help us learn and he wants to help us grow. And he does that by convicting us of what's not right. Now, he doesn't just stop there because the next thing that this passage says is that he speaks to us through his word by correcting us, by making us right. He corrects us by making us right. So he doesn't just say, this is not right. He says, this is what would be right. This is how you correct this problem. This is what I want you to do instead of this. Here's the sin I'm pointing out, and here's the thing I want you to do instead. This idea of correction is God pointing us in the right direction, saying, here's what I want you to do as you're led by my spirit. So it teaches us what is right, convicts us of what is not right, corrects us by making us right, and last, trains us to stay right and to do right. It's one thing just to know something, it's another to put it into practice, right? And so that's why we stay in God's word daily. That's why we're trained by it. This idea of training is the idea of repetition and of discipline. We have to stay in something in order to succeed in something. He says here, you'll be trained for righteousness and thoroughly equipped for good works. In other words, God calls us to do this, but he equips us to get it done. He gives us the strength and the power to do it. And that is through his word, training in his word, daily being in it. Have you guys ever run a marathon before? Yeah, good job. You're doing what I could never do and I don't strive to do. I like playing sports with balls and um, with a score and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I don't like to really run, okay? Um, That's why I respect anybody that can do a marathon. You know, anybody can do that. Now, what would happen... Uh, you guys that have run one before, if I went out and tried to run a marathon today without training for it, yeah, I'd make it as far as Dunkin' Donuts, right? Where I'd sit down and, you know, coffee and a donut, and we're done, okay? And a lot of us are trying to do, you know, God's good works without training in his word. And so that's why it's important to have a Bible reading plan. You know, I mentioned Pastor Roger encouraged us all to, to read a proverb a day that lines up with the day of the week. So today would be Proverbs 7, right? Because there's 31 Proverbs. And if you've been doing that, you understand how it's so important to train in his word. Uh, if you don't do that, maybe you could find a Bible reading plan on uversion.com. It's y-o-u-version.com, chandlercc.org. If you go there, all kinds of Bible reading plans there, but stay in his word. How many of you guys know who uh, Vince Lombardi is? How many of you guys know? Um, he's a legendary coach of the Green Bay Packers. Now, let me say, um, first off, that I'm not a Packers fan. We had a guy in the last service that just moved here from Chicago. And he was like, hey, man, what's up with the Packers thing? Um, let me just say, I'm a Cowboys fan, so it pains me a little bit to uh, talk about the, uh, the Packers. All right? What? Come up here and say that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> kidding. I've got the football, all right? Vince Lombardi, legendary coach of the Green Bay Packers, before the season started, every single season, preseason speech, this is what he'd say, whether he had a veteran team that just won the Super Bowl or all rookies or whatever, he'd stand before him and he'd hold up the football like this and he'd say, men, this is a football. Learn how it feels. Learn how to catch it. Learn how to throw it. Learn how it bounces. Learn how to recover it once it bounces. Learn how to hold on to it so you don't turn it over. Because men, I'll tell you this, no matter how smart the plays we run, no matter how, much, how big, how fast you are than the other team, the way in which you handle this oddly shaped ball will determine your success this season. Now, as a Cowboys fan, where Romo throws five interceptions this last week. I understand that full well. He says, how you handle this will determine your success. Christian, this is a Bible. Learn what it says. Learn what it means. Learn how to do what it says. Learn how to share it. Learn the promises that God has for you in this. Because no matter what else we do, how we handle this will determine our success. Amen? Yeah. You guys thought I was going to pull a Joel Osteen on you, didn't you? 
All right. God speaks through his word. Secondly, God speaks through believers. God speaks through believers. Uh, how many of you guys have ever been in church and thought, God is speaking directly to me today? Guess what? He was. <laughs> he was. Because he does, he does that. He speaks through other believers. He'll speak through um, teachers and preachers as they give the message. That's what Paul is saying in 1 Thessalonians 2.13 when he says, And we also thank God continually because... When you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it actually is the word of God, which is at work in you who what? Believe. And what he's saying here is that as uh, teachers and, and preachers of the word of God, as they, as they give that message, that is God's word. And, and, and sometimes I don't think I take that seriously enough. I, I, you know, sometimes you, you come in and you're like judging the guy by, you know, how, how well they're speaking and, and things like that. And I know I am guilty of that. And I know for me, I do a lot better when I come in and, and I just say, God, what do you want to say to me today? I say that to myself. What do you want to say to me today? And no matter what, it opens up if they're in the scriptures preaching God's word to me. I hear from God. That's why I don't like to miss church. Now, you might be saying, Matt, that's pretty self-serving since you're up giving the message today. And I will tell you that it's a scary concept to think that you're going to get up and what you're saying is supposed to be uh, God's word for people. And before it becomes this big deal and this, this, this great big deal, which I'm not saying it's not, but before it seems too special, just remember in the Old Testament, God used a donkey to speak through. I'm pretty sure he can speak through us. You might be saying, well, he's even doing that now. And... Uh, <laughs> We'll just leave it, leave it at that. But God speaks through believers. And you want to hear something else? God, only, God not only speaks through teachers and who's given the message, he speaks through you. And it's not just when you're leading a group or you're teaching in a class or, or teaching a kid's class. It's just through the ordinary fellowship that believers have with one another. He can speak through your words. That can be what somebody needed to hear, God's word for them that day. That's what Paul is saying in Ephesians 4.15 when he says... Instead, speaking the truth in love. And, and what he's saying here is, you guys, as you fellowship together, what I want you to do is I want you to speak the truth and do it in a loving way to each other. And as you do that, he says, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. You, you grow up and start looking at, like Christ as you fellowship and believers speak to one another. So God doesn't wanna just speak to us on an island, you know, and we hear from him and, and move on with our life alone. He wants us to be in the context of relationships with one another, which is why fellowship is so important because he speaks through you, he speaks to you through other believers. Now, he's done that a lot in my life through, you know, growing up. Um, two people that spoke uh, God's word to me a lot were my parents, and I remember a time when I was a sophomore in college uh, when I came home. How many of you guys have ever heard of sophomore syndrome before? You know, sophomore syndromes where you've learned all this knowledge and you think that you're smarter than everybody and you're just going to save the world, right? And so I, I came home and I was sharing all this stuff with my dad. You know, I was like, hey, you know, this is what I'm learning about the Bible and all this cool stuff. And, and this is where these people are wrong, but, but we have it right. And, you know, all this kind of stuff. And my dad listened, you know, patiently as he always does. And then he just said, um, you know, Matt, um, you know, it's really cool that you're learning all that. And I, I think that God's really going to use that, that knowledge he's given you. But don't forget what the Bible also says, that it says knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. And he said, God's only going to use that stuff as you learn to care for other people with it. Boom. <laughs> you know, that cut kind of deep. And immediately I knew that was God's word for me. Now, my dad goes to this church, um, you know, and so he'll be sitting in service listening. And sometimes I'll share things about stuff that he's said before. And he'll call me later and goes, yeah, Matt, I don't remember that. Did that really happen? <laughs> I say, no, dad, I just stood there and made stuff up, you know, as, <laughs> as I'm supposed to be preaching for God, you know. Um, you know, he'll probably say that about that too. And you know what? I think that makes a point about how God speaks through you and I. I think that says that often we don't know. You know, it's not that my dad sat down and, and said, what can I say to Matt today on behalf of God? It's that he just said what was on his heart. And because I have the Holy Spirit and he has the Holy Spirit, he just 
the Holy Spirit just lit up those words inside my heart and said, that's for you. And I think that's how he does with, with all of us. So how do you know that it's God's word for you when somebody else is saying it and not um, you know, something else? Well, a couple guidelines I think are, are needed. Uh, let me share them with you. Number one, what somebody else is saying to you, it needs to align, align with God's written word. It needs to align with God's written word. In other words, God's not gonna contradict himself. Something he said in his word isn't gonna be different than what somebody else has said. His, his word trumps that because he's already said that. It's, it's in black and white. So if somebody's telling you something that's gonna hurt somebody else or, or isn't something that builds up you know, God's kingdom, it's just kind of temporal type of deal, it's not God. You know, he won't contradict himself or forget what he's already said. Secondly, it needs to come from someone who doesn't have any ulterior motives. It needs to come from someone who doesn't have any ulterior motives. And, and they may not be trying to be manipulative. They just may have something at stake in this and they're not able to be objective about it. And when we're trying to make a decision, we may be confused or in need and it's easy to, to get manipulated by that. One example is uh, if you're a young couple and talking about if you're gonna have kids or not, one person that you might not ask is your mom. I think she's got a pretty good opinion about that already. And you really shouldn't ask her to be objective. That's what grandmas do. They want to have grandkids. And so my rule, and this is not necessarily in the Bible, um, but it's not unbiblical either. I think it's just wise. I have a rule of three. I try to ask three people who I know that love God, shown wisdom in their life about certain things, and I just run the scenario by them. And I don't sit down and go, now, be careful what you say here because you're speaking for God. You know, I don't say anything like that. I just say, hey, what do you think about this? Trusting that they're gonna run it through the, the filter of what's important and what's godly. And I hear God speak to me in those, in those situations. But God speaks to us through other believers. There's a third way that God speaks to us. And that is that God speaks through impressions as well. Through impressions as well. Now let me define this really clear, okay? God speaks through impressions which come from his Holy Spirit living inside the believer, which come from his Holy Spirit living inside the believer. He didn't speak through impressions that we see in cloud formations or, you know, billboards or a country song or, you know, anything like that, okay? Uh, this is through the impressions that he gives us through his Holy Spirit living inside the believer. Some people call this promptings from God. They've called it that before. Some people call this the still small voice of God. Those of you that went through the story, remember in the Old Testament, there was the prophet Elijah that God used to, uh, to win this incredible victory over the prophets of Baal. And God brought fire and he defeated all these prophets of Baal. And it was clear that God won. And Elijah, he was on cloud nine. I mean, he was so excited, this mountaintop experience. The only problem was those servants of Baal served the queen as well, Jezebel. And she said, for doing that, Elijah, you're gonna die. He put out a hit on him. And so Elijah went from this mountaintop experience to running for his life. And he went and he hid in a cave. And he was down in the dumps. And he needed to hear from God. I don't know if you guys have ever been there before where you have this great experience and now all of a sudden you're depressed and you're down. So God wanted to come to him and to speak to him. And so first, God sends the wind and it was so strong that it shattered some of the rocks there and God wasn't in that strong wind. And then God sent an earthquake that no doubt shook Elijah to the core, but he wasn't in that earthquake. And then he sent a fire and God wasn't in that fire. But then there was this gentle whisper. And it was in that gentle whisper where God spoke to his friend, Elijah. I think oftentimes when we most need to hear from God, we are looking for this incredible event, this incredible experience. And I'm not saying God doesn't do that sometimes, but most often how God speaks to his friends is through that gentle whisper, that still small voice of his spirit living inside of you. 
The only question is, will we slow down? Will we stop and draw near so that God can speak to us? Jesus said it this way in John 14, 26, when he promised the Holy Spirit, he said, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I've said to you. But that's a spirit that's gonna live inside you, to, to speak to you inside your spirit. And later, uh, Jesus says this spirit not only comes to teach you and to remind you of what God has said, but also to give you the words to say in the right situation when you need it. And then also to bring you comfort and peace when you're in the middle of a hard circumstance. That's how the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Now, I'll admit that God speaking through impressions is kind of a subjective thing. You know, it, it's kind of hard to nail down and, and, and define exactly how it is. And, you know, it's a good question to ask. How do I know that it's God speaking to me in my spirit? It's God's impression and not indigestion from the pizza from the night before. You know, that's kind of a tough thing to determine, really tough. Uh, it's so tough, in fact, that I'm going to leave that for Pastor Roger next week um, <laughs> as he gets up and speaks. Matter of fact, he asked me to. That's what his sermon is about next week, uh, how God speaks to us through impressions and how we know it's from God and not somewhere else. But God does speak to us in this way through the Holy Spirit. That's the third way. Fourth way is this, the final way. God speaks through painful experiences. Through painful experiences. Anybody here attest to that? Yeah, painful experiences. Sometimes that's because um, as people, we don't want to change until the pain of not changing is greater than the pain of of, or the pain of, of changing is greater than the pain of not changing. And so if we won't change until we experience pain, guess what God does? He allows us to experience pain. Now, I read a great quote this week. You may have heard it. We don't change when we see the light. We change when we feel the heat and how true that is. And let me just clarify not all pain and not all loss comes from God. We know that that comes from living in a fallen world and it's a result of sin and choices. And because God gives us the choice to follow him or not, sometimes the consequence is great when people don't. But make no mistake, no matter where the pain comes from, where the trial comes from, whether it's from the hand of God and discipline or whether it's a consequence of bad choices, God speaks to us through that pain, no matter where it comes from. C.S. Lewis said it this way, God whispers to us in our pleasure, but shouts to us in our pain. So you might be wondering, what is God trying to say to me today? And my question back to you would be, where's the pain? Where's the unanswered prayer? Where is the struggle in your life? Where is it that you're just beating up against that wall over and over. Where are some of the, the broken relationships? Where's that pain? Because likely that's the area where God wants to speak to you. Now you might ask, what is it? How do I know what he wants to say to me through this painful experience? Well, James 1.5 tells us that. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and will be given to him. You wanna hear what James is really saying here? Just two verses earlier, the context is about trials. He says, consider it pure, pure joy, my brothers, when you experience trials of many kinds. And then the very next thing he says, if you lack wisdom, then ask God and he will give you that wisdom. What kind of wisdom? The wisdom to know what God is trying to teach you through this painful trial. It's not just any kind of wisdom. He doesn't tell us why we're going through stuff. God never promises that we'll know why. But he does say that we'll know what it is that he's trying to teach us. Back in uh, 1999, uh, my wife and I lost our apartment in the tornado that swept through Oklahoma City. A lot, I mean, a lot like the, the Joplin thing that happened just recently. We lost absolutely everything. It's kind of a tough deal. And about a month later, one of my friends who was a youth pastor, uh, he asked me this question. He said, Matt, what do you think God is trying to teach you through this? And to be honest, I'll admit this morning, I, I hadn't even thought about that. You know, I was busy calling the insurance company and doing this and that and just kind of reacting to everything. I'd never thought, what does God want to teach me? 
And then my first thought on that was, why in the world would God send a tornado to teach me anything? That seems silly. Well, I understand the truth that that was a natural disaster. It was something that happens because we live in a fallen world. But I also learned that I was wrong. God did want to teach us something, to, to speak to us in that. And here's how he spoke to us in it. For one thing, everybody that heard about this, they started just showering us with, with stuff, with gifts, with checks, with, you know, here, we heard you lost everything. Here's this, here's that. Here's, you know, please, please accept this to the point that it got to be too much and we started just sending it on to other places because we just didn't need it. But what I learned through that was that God spoke through other believers, other people to tell me that he loves me so much and that he's gonna take care of me and that he's, he's not gonna let us go without what we need. I got that message from God. He spoke that way. The other thing I heard was as I stayed in his word, and I'll tell you, if you're going through a trial, stay in the scriptures. The other thing I learned was that contentment, contentment is not based on the stuff I have because I didn't have anything, but it was based on a relationship with God and with God's people. That's what's important in life, eternal things. God said that loud and clear. It was a few minutes later when it, when it just all kind of cascaded in and, and you know, I, I was thinking about everything and realized that through that terrible ordeal, God had used that to give me a precious gift and that is what he wanted to say to me specifically. It could be for you that you're going through a trial right now or you've gone through one and you never really figured out what it is that you were supposed to learn from that. I encourage you today to ask for the wisdom that comes from God to teach you what it is that God wants to say to you through this painful ordeal. He's right there with you. He's in pain with you. Jesus experienced um, just as much pain, if not more than any of us here. So he understands it. He's not, he's not being tried about it, but he does wanna teach us and speak to us through it. Let me just go back to the beginning, that God created us in order to have a relationship with us. That's what he wants. He didn't just say, hey, you know, I created you, good luck with your life, I'll meet you on the other side. He wants to have a relationship with, with us. So hearing from God is vital that we might gain eternal life and we might be part of his family that he might guide us into life's true blessings. That's what he wants to do. And it could be today that you're not a believer or you've not placed your faith in Jesus and you're asking God to speak to you in, in, in all these different ways. And what I'll say to you today is the only thing that God is saying to you today is I want you in my family and the only way in is through a relationship with Jesus. And you have that opportunity today to take that step of faith and place your faith in Jesus Christ. I invite you to come forward at the end of the service to pray with some of our prayer partners. Talk to me out on the, on the, on the patio about placing your faith in Jesus Christ, repenting, getting baptized, starting that relationship with Christ. Maybe that you're here today and you've already made that decision. You, you've placed your faith in Christ. You've repented of your sin. You have been baptized so you can be forgiven and receive the Holy Spirit. And it could be that you're feeling a little dry and distant from God. And you're feeling like, man, I don't feel like God is speaking to me very much. Let's go back to these ways of how God wants to speak to you. Through his word, are you in his word? Get in his word. Through impressions that come from his spirit, are you slowing down enough to hear from God? Through believers, are you in fellowship so that other people can speak into your life on God's behalf? And through those, those painful trials, those experiences, where you can get God's wisdom. If we do that, we will find life's true blessings. Let's pray. Father, um, thank you so much just for creating us and for desiring to have a, a relationship with us, for communicating with us. God, we know that that's vital and without that communication, we can't have that relationship with you that you've created us to have. So God, this morning, just help us just to be, be wise enough to choose that to know how important that is, and Lord, to follow you. Lord, we love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
The band's going to come and lead us in a song of commitment here. But I ask you to stand and just to sing and consider what it is that God is saying to you today. <laughs>